Okay, before I forget, uh, I wanted to discuss something in the last video uh, while I was bifacing. And uh, it's something called uh, persistent contact. Now, uh, you don't have to worry too much about that concept with uh, a soft material like antler or wood. But with hammer stones, uh, a lot of times you get uh, a bounce. And it's hard to explain, but um, especially with small work and for, with freehand work, uh, the two stones will bounce off each other. And when that happens, uh, you can't peel off a flake easily. Or the flake that is removed is short. Uh, if you have persistent contact uh, during the flake removal where the stone is in constant contact with the platform, there is a longer flake removal, if that makes sense. If, it, if it's bouncing, if you're getting a lot of bounce like this, you're just going to get short flakes and crushing and uh, messed up areas. And it happens more with the hard hammer stones. than with uh, the softer hammer stones. And a lot of people don't even discuss it. And I think it's worth mentioning and worth keeping in mind that uh, persistent contact with the platform during the flake removal is extremely important. And a lot of smart guys have figured that out already, a lot of smart nappers. Uh, but they don't really discuss it all that much because it becomes second nature. Uh, you kind of get the feel uh, for the effect of uh, maintaining the contact and you say, oh, it's a good hammer stone. But really, not really knowing exactly why or forgetting why. But that's the reason. Uh, if the hammer stone maintains the contact with your workpiece for a good amount of time, the flakes will come off longer you'll get less crushing and better results overall. So I just wanted to mention that before I forgot. Okay. Now this is, again, this is heat treated. It looks like I might have a lot of issues with this one. Internal cracking. From the heat well some of these flakes they look pretty good I can probably use these later on for small arrowheads so I will save some of these but it looks like in here I don't know if you can see It is, it is a grainy type of stone, but it's also got lots of seams and uh, maybe some heat damage. Right in here. This is what the heat damage looks like. You get areas that look like they're peeling. That, that are not from the, uh, the striking of the hammer stone. They're not flakes or whatever. I might be able to use that. If there's not too many issues, I can make a small arrowhead out of something like that. Well, I guess it doesn't look too bad. This side looks pretty good, actually. And I'm using a hard hammer stone because it reduces the material quickly. I don't have to, you know, build up the uh, force if the first hit doesn't work uh, with a soft hammer stone a lot of times you know it won't detach a flake you have to hit harder but with a hard hammer stone and with some weight to it you don't have to worry about second strikes as often it'll usually power off the flake on the first strike now this is the uh, the point where I need to 
pay attention to how long the flakes are. Because before I was just trimming around and shaping a little bit just to get my general outline. But now when I'm thinning, I've got to focus on uh, running longer flakes and maintaining contact or creating that persistent contact effect without you know bouncing bouncing off now I'm just shaping the edge a little bit so I can you know kind of create a bevel here Kind of. Okay. I'm not sure. There's probably a seam that caused that. So it's considerably shorter now, but that's fine. I'd rather have a solid piece and then a long piece with seams in it. Okay, so let's see. There's a seam here, but I don't, I don't think it goes all the way through, so I want to try to knock off a lot of that area here. But I actually beveled it the other way. Let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise the edge toward this way a little bit more. I'm not sure if I beveled it in the incorrect direction on purpose or, I mean, by accident or, or what I was thinking. Okay. And I review these videos to see what I did. See, the first strike hit pretty hard, but it didn't do anything, so I had to hit harder. That's common with these soft hammer stones. But during this stage, I've got to be more careful. And I don't necessarily need it to be powered off right away. That's a good platform there. I didn't hit it very hard. I hit it kind of low. Let's see. Much better. But a little bit too much. There's probably some internal issues in here, so I'm not too upset about the uh, the reverse hinge there. Uh, yeah, there's probably some internal issues that will give me trouble later on, so I can only make small arrowheads out of this anyway. Okay. Let's see. Anyways. Um, I'll probably cut this video short. It's already almost 10 minutes. I gotta be somewhere 
in the next few minutes. So let's see what I can do with this piece and then that'll be it. Just checking, this is a lot of cortex in here. Yeah. I should actually leave some mass on when I'm doing this other part. The, uh, the increase in mass also aids you in, the, in maintaining contact because it, it moves more slowly. It, it, it gives less of a bouncing effect if there's more mass in the piece so that you're maintaining contact longer before it actually separates. The same goes for the hammer stone as well. But when you have a large hammer stone, it's kind of difficult to change the course or control the actual movement. You know, you're committed pretty much on your swing. You can't make minute adjustments. Uh, these are all subconscious or unconscious things, but I prefer a, a smaller hammer stone because it gives me a little more control than a bigger one. Even though flakes may come off in a longer fashion with, you know, more mass in these tools and work pieces. Um, but, that, you know, you compensate for that with practice. Okay, so, yeah, leave more mass in this uh, when removing longer flakes and it's easier. Okay. If that made sense. <laughs> I'm trying to focus on this and talk at the same time. Let's see. Yeah, and if I want to drive a long flake through here, it's good to have some mass and firm it up in my grip before I hit and then, you know, diminish the energy after that. To have a feather, you know, termination, you have to have something called uh, diminishing resistance. And I, I think I mentioned that in a previous video. Uh, anyway, let's see if I can get a long flake here. I hit that a little bit too high, but I, I did get some cracking. Let's see. Separate it slowly. It's kind of nice material. It the bulb went deeper than I thought it would go. I thought it would just kind of skim across. Yeah, if that seam is not a problem later I can make a good arrowhead out of that one. It's a really thin here though, so I don't know. I don't know if that was all that helpful. Because I've got to thicken this up if I, want, if I want to dry flakes from this edge. Now if I can dry flakes from other edges, I don't have to worry about that thinness too much. I can just leave it thin there. Alright, so I'm going to try another flake here. Hopefully the bulb won't be so pronounced. Yeah, I got another very pronounced bulb. The consistency is pretty good. This is it responded pretty good to the heat, and so, but this area over here is doesn't re respond very much. So I've got to be very gentle with this side, but very aggressive with that side. So I'm being very aggressive here. That's probably why I'm getting these big scoop outs. That one I didn't, I wasn't as forceful and I just kind of let it uh, peel off. It's important that I have a clean surface.
I get that a lot when I have a good platform. Or maybe I'm thinking I have a good platform and it really isn't. So that, that crack there. It might give me some trouble. So yeah, I just went ahead and just powered that off instead of just doing it piecemeal. I'm just going to keep hitting it and take it back until I get to the good stuff. And then I can hit on the good stuff and drive some flakes to hopefully remove that there. Again, the, uh, the crushing uh, due to lack of experience. <laughs> Those kind of errors can be uh, fixed with experience to know just how hard to hit and how high to hit and how thick to make that platform and all that. Uh, so you don't get that kind of crushing. So now to eliminate that, I've got to come in from the other side and try to get that off. Um, it's actually a lot of mass on that tip. Yeah, that helped a little bit. And with a punch, I can do a lot more accurate uh, strikes to get some of that off. Well, that did it pretty good. The only problem with that is it, you know, it catches a lot of the edge and you end up taking a little bit too much off, but that's all right.
Yeah, as long as I'm hitting on good stone, I can, you know, it'll maintain good contact and hopefully uh, with the, just the right amount of force and the right amount of holding pressure, I can maintain that contact and peel that flake off. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video. Now this is limestone against limestone. This here is just almost the same consistency as this here. This cortex is almost the same as this hammerstone. But I think there's enough good stuff in there that I can drive the flake. Well, almost. Not too bad. Again, this cortex is just like this here. So not much happens. Because both are crushing, you know, this will dimple and then this will dimple too, and you're not getting much force transferring. Too bad. Another thing, of course, is to eliminate any concavities. You eliminate the concavities right beyond the platform before you strike. Because those concavities will make the edge weak and they'll just crush. that <laughs> okay I didn't make that convex enough let's see if I can do it this time That's good enough. That's good enough for punch work to finish that out. It's got a nice pattern too. But I don't look at the pattern while I'm doing this. I've learned that I don't want to spend too much time trying to preserve any type of patterning or coloration when I'm working because it distracts me from thinning. So that's good enough for that. Okay.